Hey y'all, Wacky Worm here, starting a new series on the mod pack Blightfall. This is a mod pack for 1.7.10, and it's on the uh, Technic launcher. It's a really cool pack. It's very centered around Thomcraft, and I'll explain what exactly I mean by that in a second. Uh, but it's it's just a super cool mod pack, and I've been feeling really nostalgic for Thomcraft, and uh, I figured this would be a great way to really be thrust into it and have a lot of fun with it. So I've already loaded uh, or pre-generated the world, even though I'm pretty sure all the world is exactly the same by default. Um, but anyways, here we are. Uh, this is one of the questing mod packs, so we can go ahead and pull up our questing book here. And basically in this backstory here, you find out that humans uh, found a planet uh, that was in the Goldilocks zone, so it was like perfect for us to go and uh, you know inhabit and stuff and so we set out and we get here and Well, it's it's okay, but it's crawling in uh, Gooey creepy purple Infecting biomass whatever stuff and instead of packing up and heading home. We decided that we would just send some drop uh, drop pods down. I think they're called uh, and let colonists you know try to fix it try to figure out stuff about it and fix it and try to recover the planet so that's our job is we're one of those colonists and we're gonna have to head down to the planet surface from the ship here and get things fixed uh, now the ship is super awesome it's, it's crazy cool there's a lot of awesome stuff on here uh, but we're gonna save that for another episode right now I'm mostly interested in getting down to the planet as fast as possible so uh, this is the drop pod room. We have Mirabelle Hackett here, uh, who is an NPC that we can talk to about the different environments that these pods have been uh, placed in. So there's a total of six. They go from drop pod alpha all the way around to drop pod omega. They pretty much range in difficulty from alpha being the easiest all the way around to omega being uh, supposedly pretty difficult. We're actually going to select Omega uh, because Omega is an underwater base and I've always really liked underwater stuff. Uh, before I do that though, uh, if you're going to be playing this with a group of people or if you're going to be playing it, uh, think you're going to use a little teleporter in these different pods to go check them all out before you actually commit, uh, note that once you use a pod's teleporter, it puts you on that team. So we're going to be on the Omega team and this teleporter will be the only one I can use. I will have to actually go out and discover the rest of the biodomes in the world itself before I'm able to use these other teleporters. And I don't even think I'll be able to use those. I think I'll just use a normal teleporter to reach those other areas. But as soon as I use this guy, I'm gonna be locked out of going to those other places. So if you've got you know people joining your team or something like that, make sure they use the appropriate pod so you don't all get separated. We're going to right click on this guy here. It's going to tell us that we're probably making a very bad choice. We're going to be under the water. There's going to be a lot less room. Farming is going to be tough. Uh, we're going to be on top of a mine shaft. This is not a good idea. Are we sure we want to do it? Yeah, let's go for it. So we end up down here uh, in this little glass dome. And I've, I've played a little bit of this. So I know some of the beginning stuff. Uh, but not very far at all. But we're in a little glass dome. We've graciously been given a silverwood tree from Thomcraft with a pure node inside it that's going to fight off any of that taint trying to come into this area. Uh, but of course, you stray very far at all from this area, and uh, there will be taint everywhere. Uh, we've got the mine shaft down here. We can just kind of quickly go and check things out here. You see the taint's already spreading up this far, so well, we're not. Uh, we don't have to go very far at all for to start running into some of the tank. Uh, luckily, they also provided a glass wall to section us off from the uh, mine shaft there, so we don't have to worry about that for a while. Um, but yeah, that's that's what we've got. We've got some books up there, we got some beds and all that cool stuff, but that's about it. So let's crack open the quest book here. Go ahead and get started. Uh, this reputation here is actually going to have a significant impact on how we play the game, um, but I'm going to get into it in just a second, not quite yet. For the categories for our quest book, they're sorted by the uh, 
the officer or the person on the Jaded, which was the ship we came in on, uh, who we're basically talking to and interacting with in order to do these quests or whatever. So the first one is the instructor. We're going to go ahead and open that up, look at the first quest. This quest requires us to deliver one dirt, which sucks because we have exactly two dirt down here. So we're going to submit one of these dirt and then be stuck with only one remaining. Uh, the good thing is we're going to get a bump to that reputation, which we're going to talk about right about now. So we look at this second task, and uh, we have a requisition officer, Corporal Driscoll, who will deliver us some items upon our request. So he's going to help us out, and they're invested in our survival and stuff, so they're willing to help us out some. Uh, and this is basically saying that if we ask him, we can probably get a sapling. So we're going to back out, and we're going to head over here to the supplier category. So this is Driscoll. And the only one we have completed here, the sapling, we can accept. Now, this has a requirement, even though we're not turning in items or crafting things, it has a reputation requirement. It says here, if our mission outlook is uh, getting down here in the near cancellation or canceled area, we're not going to be able to request this sapling. So basically, every time we request uh, items from the ship, it's going to sort of count against us because we're trying to be self-sufficient. Uh, that's what this reward of reputation here is, is this is actually a, a negative to our reputation. Uh, also, in order for, this, for them to send us things, we have to have a certain amount of reputation. Um, so they don't want to be sending items off somewhere that it's just going to go to waste. So we're not concerned with this much in the early game, I don't think, or at least for the next couple of episodes. But it's definitely something we're going to have to watch in the future. But that got us our sapling. So uh, we can go ahead and finish that quest. So complete the sapling quest. Really convenient. They sent us a lot of bone meal uh, for doing that. Our next quest has to do with getting wood. So we're going to go ahead, climb up here, and uh, let's pick a spot, say right here. Plant that sapling and get some wood growth. And then this is going to enable us to create a crafting table, which was what that quest was calling for. I'm going to go ahead and finish out this wood, and then hopefully wait for some saplings to drop to replace that while I craft up a crafting table. And then once it sits in the inventory, it checks off the task in the quest book. And I'll go ahead and flip it over to a crafting station, just because they're so much more convenient. Uh, so we see this guy's completed. We get some uh, mission outlook improvements for that. Go ahead and claim that reward. This guy's cool here. We have a repeatable uh, quest here for Bone Mill. The really cool thing about this is it's a uh, no strings attached request for Bone Mill. So this does not actually cost us reputation. We don't have to have a minimum amount of it to get it. It's, I guess Bone Mill's just so cheap they can send it down whenever. So that's nice and convenient. We got our bone meal. Uh, we're hopefully waiting for some saplings to drop from this guy and I can replant it. And then at this point in the quest book, there's actually a fork in the road. We can either say we don't need any tutorials. We create a couple of uh, Tinker's Construct tools and move along. Or we can actually be guided through the Tinker's Construct uh, progression a little bit. I'm not too concerned about it. I don't need the mission outlook, I don't think, at this point. Um, and I'd rather just kind of move along. And this mission outlook, uh, it probably gives us an equivalent amount. Um, see, this was plus 18. That last one was just a plus one. So it, they probably you know, are roughly equivalent by the time you get done. So I'm just going to work on creating these. Now, I do know from my little bit of playtesting and you know, super, super early game stuff that I've actually done in this. That one of the cool things about spawning in Omega is over here. So we're under the ocean, but up there on land, there is actually a large great wood tree. And not only that, there's actually a little tree house, a little abandoned tree house up there. So we're going to go check that out and get some goodies that are in it. 
Uh, I'm going to meet you guys. This might take a second for me to get to the surface and all. So I'm just going to kind of remember that I came out of the front right corner of that as I'm coming back from the treehouse. There we go. So yeah, front right corner is where I just came out of. Um, I'm going to get over to land and gather a few things up and then I'll meet you guys there in a second. Alright, so through the magic of bone meal, we ended up with the seeds I was looking for. So I'm pretty sure these are the only three types of seeds that will drop from grass. We've got the barley, uh, regular old wheat seeds, and then cotton seeds. So these are going to be incredibly useful going forward. I'm going to go and check out the treehouse now. So this is pretty cool. There's a lot of Thumbcraft stuff going on in here. Uh, there's a Thumbonomicon in that bookshelf. Don't really worry about the rest of those, at least for now. Nothing on the research table, nothing on the work table. Uh, what is cool, though, is this over here. So we've got some Tinker stuff all set up and ready for us to use. So we had to do a Matic, which is a shovel head and an axe head. We had to do a pickaxe. Uh, and the pickaxe also requires a tool binding. And then to assemble that, we head over to the tool station, but I need a few more sticks. So pickaxe, this guy, there, there, and a stick. We'll call this guy the wacky pick. And then the matic, uh, axe, stick, shovel head. We'll call this the wacky matic. And that's that. And then I'm going to go ahead and harvest this. There's no point in me leaving this up here. So I'm going to go ahead and pick these things up, including the tool forge, which is so convenient. It's really going to help us out with mining and clearing dirt and stuff. We've got this chest here. I don't think I need any of this stuff, at least not now. And it's not so far a trip. I can't pop up here and get it real quickly. There are a couple of silverwood saplings in here, and I'm definitely going to take those as well as the string, uh, and I'm going to plant those silverwood saplings along the shoreline here. I'm going to go ahead and grab one of these pure daisies, just because. Save me a few seeds and such. Um, and that's it. So I'm going to head down. Uh, I'm going to use my new mattock to grab a bunch of dirt. I'm going to go ahead and plant those silverwood saplings somewhere nearby. And then I will meet you guys back down at the base. Alright, so we are returning to base. I just realized as I glanced down at my hotbar that I never planted those saplings. That's fine, I can do that off camera. I did gather up some clay in addition to the dirt that I saw up there. I don't know what I'll need the clay for yet, but I'm sure it'll be useful. Um, and yeah, so we've got some seeds. I got a lot of dirt. I've got the mattock and stuff so we can start planting things, which I'm going to do. Next episode, one of the things we're very concerned about early game is starving to death. Not only, number one, because there's no food around, but number two, we have that mod, uh, the Spice of Life, I think it's called in here. Um, so where you have diminishing returns on whatever food you eat up to the last six different things you ate. So basically, if I eat an apple, I have to eat five other different things like all five of those things being different before eating an apple gets me that full hunger uh, healing that it normally does so that's a concern uh, but our, our more pressing concern is just starving for lack of food in general which is why next episode we're going to get that farm going we're going to get these seeds down hopefully we can get some apples out of our oak tree and uh, at least at least then have two or three different types of foods available to us. And then I got a feeling the quest book is going to provide a lot more uh, fairly quickly, hopefully. So that's the plan going forward from here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap up the first episode. I had a lot of fun. I'm going to have a lot of fun. This is going to be a great mod pack. I'm really looking forward to getting really down deep and nitty gritty with Tomcraft. It's going to be so much fun. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I'll be happy to talk things out with y'all. And I will see y'all in episode two.